Welcome to AIONIS and CTO News Thursday, your go-to podcast with Marion and I for understanding AI regulation and its impact on businesses. Today, we're diving into a critical question. Can we innovate without sacrificing trust? In an AI-driven world, data privacy isn't just a legal requirement, it's the cornerstone of trust. Yet, as businesses race to innovate, privacy often takes a backseat. From high-profile data breaches in social media to the growing use of sensitive information in healthcare and retail, it is clear that this balance in between innovation and trust is harder than ever to maintain. Um, are privacy and progress destined to clash or can they coexist? To help us tackling this, we are thrilled to welcome Debbie, Chicago-based Chief Data Officer and the leading voice in ethical data practices. Welcome, Debbie. Happy to be here. Thank you so much. Excellent. Debbie, welcome to the show. Before we dive into the topic, can you tell us a bit about your background and how your work intersects with AI and data privacy? So I'm a data privacy and emerging tech expert. I work a lot with companies on digital transformation, developing and implementing tools. Also, I help companies with maturity in terms of their data privacy, and data protection, emerging tech, because that's kind of the center of what I work on, which includes artificial intelligence. Debbie. Let's kick things off. What do you think businesses underestimate mostly with regards to the connection between AI and data privacy? That's a great question. I think companies underestimate the connection between data privacy and artificial intelligence because they don't really see or understand how data flows through AI systems. So the way that people traditionally think about privacy is, okay, I have data. I give someone the data for whatever purpose, like maybe a good or a service that I'm asking them to do on my behalf. They only use the data for that purpose. And then, you know, if I want to delete it or change or something, they kind of give me access. Artificial intelligence adds a layer of complexity to computing in terms of how companies are doing that. The data doesn't have that kind of linear path, the way that people really think about it. Uh, it's kind of a different way of thinking about the way the data happens or how it works in AI systems, especially when we're thinking about LLMs. You know, the data that goes into those systems gets transformed. So if it's being transformed to different things, it's hard to really track or figure out what that data flow should be and what what that data output will be. All those things, if they impact personal data of someone, it can create a privacy issue. So privacy issues come up based on data that's collected and data that's retained. And we know the AI systems collect personal data and they can retain personal data. Can you explain in concrete what you mean when you say AI models can retain or and collect data? So basically, data systems are made to remember data, not to forget it. AI models have the same issue. If someone puts in someone's sensitive or personal information into models, it's there, right? Unless there's a step taken to, you know, somehow either mask the information, anonymize, pseudonymize the information, suppress maybe an output, those types of things. And so that's really where the privacy risk comes. Let's say, for instance, some company is doing their due diligence and they decide, okay, we're going to not put certain personal information into these models, right? So it creates less risk for them, the company, and also less risk for the person based on the types of things that will be done with this data, right? Thinking about what is collected about a person, their personal information, and also what is retained is going to be a big issue especially in AI models where where deletion isn't straightforward, much harder to do. There's just going to be a lot more work around finding methods to protect that type of data if it is if it does get into models. According to uh, PwC's 2024 Voice of the Consumer Survey, which was conducted over 20,000 consumers across 31 countries, 83% of respondents rank data protection as one of the most critical factors in earning their trust. Yet the report also highlights a widening gap. While executive believes consumers trust them, often consumer sentiments tell a different story. And to quote Eddie Glaston Brassi, Deliver's chief growth and marketing officer, she explains that in an era of wide distrust, people trust brands they love and companies that choose their data responsibly. Debbie, can business innovate? without compromising privacy. 
Yeah, absolutely. I think privacy does not stop innovation. It basically is to have companies level up and be able to understand that in addition to providing a certain product or service or whatever it is you're doing for someone, you also have to take into account that people want to have more transparency and control over the data that they provide to companies. So I think Companies that will win in the future are those who understand that they have a dual responsibility to people. So it's not just providing a good or a service to someone, it's also being a good steward of their data. In terms of privacy preserving strategies, there are a number of things that companies can do in terms of artificial intelligence. As it relates to personal data, especially sensitive data of individuals, probably the first and easiest way or the least expensive way that companies can combat this is to really abstain from putting the sensitive data parts into models, right? So that creates some upfront work for people when they're putting data into models. For example, let's say you're cooking a meal, you don't take everything out of your refrigerator and put it in a pot and then make a meal, right? So you pick and choose what you are going to use for the thing that you want to do. So being more aware of what you want to do with the data downstream will help you pick and choose what goes into those models and reduce the risk for individuals and for people. Also, we're seeing a lot of different types of strategies that companies are having where they're trying to suppress personal data in terms of what goes out in terms of output. So that may be changing the data, masking it, stopping it from going out. Certain models won't let you do certain types of questions or they'll stop you from doing types of input. So I think those types of strategies are very good for companies to really think about. And then there's an upfront education piece as well. So educating people about what should or shouldn't go into models or who should or shouldn't see information that is part of those outputs. So I think that is going to be incumbent upon companies to really think about what's in their models who is accessing those those models, making sure they're not creating almost like a data breach situation where, let's say, a third party or, or another person has access to data that they shouldn't have access to because these models don't really follow the traditional way we think about access controls where you have a database and maybe like Marianne has access to something and John has access to something else. You pretty much get access to all or nothing, right? And depending on the skill of the person who's doing the prompting or putting data in those systems, a lot of times it's not evident to the person the potential harm that can happen if someone's personal or sensitive data is exfiltrated out of those AI systems. AI regulations like Europe's GDPR and EU AI Act often seems as hurdles, but these are actually roadmaps for building trust and ensuring ethical AI. The GDPR that set the global standard for data protection and the AI Act introduces stricter obligations for higher risk AI systems to promote transparency and fairness. We know these are complex challenges and as much they offer a path forward. They raise tough questions. To help us unpack how businesses can navigate these frameworks effectively, we're going to turn to you, Debbie. What do you see is the biggest challenge or opportunities for companies aligning with these regulations? Two of the biggest challenges that companies have with these regulations, one is that these regulations, the GDPR, the EU AI Act, really put humans at the center, right? Where they're saying, if based on how you handle someone's data, you can create a harm to that person. The regulations are trying to create a situation where the individual has more transparency and control over their data. And also is incumbent on companies to really understand that their use of this type of data can create a harm for people. To me, that's very groundbreaking, right? As opposed to do this or that or don't do this or that. They're saying, okay, think about the harm, think about the risk. You know, I like the way that the EU AI Act sort of rates AI systems based on risk, based on harm, saying like some uses are unacceptable, so we're going to ban it in the EU. And I think that will be very instructive for a lot of other jurisdictions around the world. Also, the other thing that companies need to really think about that they never really thought about before is that it really puts a fine point on the end of data life. So Debbie, as a wrap up, let's leave on a positive note. 
If there's one key takeaway from our conversation today, is that privacy and innovation can coexist with the right strategies. Thanks for tuning into AINS and CTN News Thursday. Don't forget to subscribe for more insights on ethical AI 